Hi guys, welcome to another card trick here at Totally Magic Channel. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, then do so right away. And also the notification bell. We do upload videos every single week and you don't want to miss out. This one is a great little quick trick and it involves you and a spectator. And it goes something like this. You introduce the card, you say, look, did you know that magicians can sometimes make you take cards that you don't actually really want? So when they say to you take a card, you never know if you're getting this one, this one or this one as a free choice. Now I want to break the rules. You see, I want you to be in control. You're going to handle the cards. Not only that, so that I don't influence you in any way at all. I'm going to turn around so I've got my back to you. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to turn around and I want you to cut the cards in half. Okay, I'm going to turn around now so you as a performer turn your back to the audience. The spectator cuts the cards roughly about halfway. You ask them to complete the cut and say to them, while my back's turned, I want you to take the card from the top that you've cut to, but do not look at it. Put it in your pocket or hold it under the table. They will remove the top card and they will keep it safe. You then ask them, before I turn back around, I want you to shuffle the pack. Now they will pick this up and this is the audience doing this, not you. They shuffle the cards and once they're happy that they've shuffled them, they ask you to turn around and you turn back around to them and you say, everything was done behind my back. Now, of course, with magicians, I know that you're going to be taking a card from this pack. Now, I'm actually kind of looking to see if I can pick up a vibe. You see, the problem I've got is that you haven't looked at your cards. So, of course, I'm not sure how I'm going to pick those signals up. So I'll tell you what to do. To give me a little helping hand, I want you to look at your card, peek at it so no one else can see it, and remember it. And the spectator will have a look at their card. You've got it in your head. Now you've got something to think of. And I want you to think of your card. And I'm going to see if I can pick that up. You see, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm picking up something, but I do need a bit more help, you see. The cards are going to help me. Remember, you took a card that you cut to. I couldn't have controlled that. Not only that, before I turned back around, you shuffled the deck into a random order. I believe the cards are going to help me. These three cards are going to help me. You see, this one tells me that your card is not a black card it's a red card am i right yes this card tells me the value it's a two so we now know that it's a two and it's red and this card tells me that as i have the heart you have the two of diamonds have a look So here is the tutorial for this particular card effect. Now it's not an original effect, although the method is what I came up with, but it may be the same as other ones out there. Some of you may remember that this trick was done by this guy here. Just like Penn and Teller, I'm not gonna to attempt to say his name, but I'm sure you know who he is. He appeared on Penn and Teller on the UK version of Fool Us uh, about four or five years ago. And he did a trick similar to this one. He may have performed it a different way, but I liked the effect. So I came up with this method. First of all, I liked the fact that he turned his back and that the spectator, in this case, Alison on Penn and Teller, cut the cards and took a card from the middle of the pack. 
But what really threw me was the fact that before he turned around, the cards were shuffled as well by the spectator. No, they weren't. They were shuffled by Teller. Then he turned around. So how did it work? Well, this is my version. And I think it works really well. I know you can probably do this effect using sleight of hand, but if you can keep it simple, keep it simple. This is what I came up with. Because you're going to ask them to cut the cards roughly about the middle, then what we can do here is have a stack in the middle. Now what I do is I take the aces, the four aces, and I put those exactly in the middle of the pack. 26 cards down around that area. Now, what I found with this, I don't know about you, but whenever I ask someone to cut the pack in half, you might get lucky and someone might cut the pack exactly in half, 26 and 26, but in my experience, they're off by a few cards. So this is why I have the four aces to be in the middle. But because I don't trust the audience to cut perfectly, I wanted to give myself a little bit of um, leeway either side. So I also removed the twos and the threes from the pack. And I now put these either side of the aces. So you can see what I'm doing here. Now I've got 12 cards. So if I put this little stack of 12 in the middle of the pack, even if the spectator, when they cut the pack in half, even if they're off by three, four cards, you're okay, you're safe. Now, for those of you that don't even trust the audience to cut even within 12 cards, you can add another stack of fours and fives okay so now what you've got is 20 cards in the middle that are stacked you don't need these but if you don't just don't trust them then put these either side it doesn't matter which side they are let me just show you the stack order now hopefully if they're good at cutting they will cut where the aces are if they're a little bit off, which most people are, they might cut into the twos or they may cut into the threes. Now I need to know that for speed when I come to look through the pack, as you'll see. So with these in, in the middle of the pack, you put these in. That's it. The great thing is, is that you can show some of the cards at the bottom and you can even show cards at the top freely like that. If you guys can do full shuffles and cuts and feel free to do that, but I don't think you need to. There's the cards. You're already turning your back on them, so you're not seeing what they do. They cut the card. It couldn't be easier than that. So let me try this. I'm going to cut the cards, and I've deliberately done a bad cut so you can see what happens. I've deliber I can deliberately see that there's more cards here than here. But let's just say that the audience cut the cards and complete the cut, they then take the top card. You can then ask them to shuffle the pack. Now it doesn't make any difference if they do a riffle shuffle, a Hindu shuffle or overhand shuffle. Let's just say they do a shuffle like that. Now when you look at these cards and if you watch a performance, all you do on the first instance is while you're talking to them saying look if I was a real magician I could go through and pick up the senses of what card you've currently got in your pocket. Now what I'm going to do is look for the aces, the twos and the threes. So as I go through I've come across an ace I can see the threes. Now can you see that within two seconds of me spreading I can see four threes there. So now I go through and I can see there's the twos. Now I can see that I've got four twos and I've got the three aces. Now I come to the fives. That means that they didn't take the aces, the twos or the threes or even the fours because they were there. I straight away know they've got a five 
and as I go along here I'm going to break the cards here you can see I've got two sometimes you'll have two sometimes you'll even have three of those grouped together but I, at this time I'm just skimming through so remember this is the speed you're doing at when you pull the cards up just look for those they're obvious they're in blocks I've seen them yeah I can see that I can see the fives I'm going to hold a break here because I'm going to cut these to the top I'm now going through and I can see there's a five on the top now that's great now that won't always be there so let me just put that in there that's great that it was there but I can now see that there's another five here what I'm going to do is to cut the pang and say look because you haven't seen your card I'm having trouble picking up your thought ways because even you don't know the card and that's why you don't get them to look at the card first of all because it gives you the option to view the cards twice because if you only had to do it once you would have to do everything in one quick move and I think that would take quite a while you might be able to do that but for me twice is better first time I can go through and get a feel for what the card is that they've actually cut through and you can see the cut was so bad that it was in amongst the fives I've already worked two of the fives to the top so they look at their card I'm still not going to look at it they're going to look at their card then you're going to ask them to concentrate when you pick the cards up you can go straight to where you want to go and there's the other five and all I do is I can just kind of bring this to the top of the pack like this and go through and like this. Now because the spectator shuffled the cards, it doesn't matter if you drop them a little bit now because they are in a mixed order. Okay. I've now loaded the top three cards. It's just a simple case of me playing up to the, the performance, dealing off three cards, putting the rest of the cards on one side. I pick these up and look at them. I can see what I've got. I know that's the heart, the five of hearts. So I then put, I got two black cards. So I put the first one down and say, this one tells me that the color is the opposite of this. So you haven't got a black card and that smile. You then put this one down and say, this one tells me the value. It's a five, so it's a red five. And this one, because I have the diamond, tells me that you have got the five of hearts. And they have. And that's it. Have a little play around with that. Once you get used to looking for this, and, and don't forget, I deliberately wanted to show to you how you work this if it's cut badly. Most people will get into the aces, or maybe the two or the threes if they're off a little bit okay but you got such a leeway but I deliberately did such a bad cut just to prove that it still works it just takes a little bit more hunting around but have a practice it doesn't take long for you to go through on there and remember when people shuffle you turn around because that will encourage them to stop shuffling they've done a shuffle they've only got to do one if they do two overhand shuffles they're still not going to mix up the cards most general public aren't that good at shuffling so uh, they're not going to be totally mixed up so it gives you a head start try it it works really well and it's an impressive trick Practice and enjoy.